Dr. Patrice Carter coming to you live from the First Ladies Forum in Greensboro, North Carolina, sponsored by Lady Business Inc. First Ladies Forum is a forum set up for women to come and celebrate being women in business, women in ministry, and just women in life. And we come together to talk about how we can inspire one another and lift one another up. And so the topic tonight is what are the characteristics that define a First Lady? So I'll be a member of the panel speaking about those characteristics and also have set up to sell my book and to promote um, Superb Woman from Bad Girl to God's Girl. As far as being a First Lady, the reason I believe that I'm a First Lady is because I'm not afraid to go first. I'm not afraid to go to war and I'm not afraid to go alone and so if you want to be a first lady you got to be afraid not afraid to go alone because sometimes some places in your life you're going to be alone you're not going to be able to get the person on the phone you're not going to have anyone to turn to but you always have God you always have Jesus so not only that you can't be afraid of the battle and so the other thing is to live out loud and what I mean by live out loud and some of my other sisters on the panel touched on it is so often we're afraid to let people know our testimony. We're let, afraid to let people know what's going on with us and what's going on in our life. Mm -hmm. And as a result, the enemy keeps us in bondage. But Psalm 32 and 7, where David is speaking, he says that when I kept silent, that my bones grew weak and my bones dried out and it became like a cancer. And then the other, everyone touched on um, God and Jesus, but I'm going to tell you, you have to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you don't do anything else, you can have him, you can talk about him, but you have to have a relationship. The next thing is to focus on being superb. So my book is um, Superb Woman from Bad Girl to God's Girl, but what I wanted to leave you with was when you're superb, that means that you're not afraid to be brilliant, you're not afraid to shine, you're not afraid to be excellent, and superb is the highest level of integrity, the highest level of professionalism, the highest level that you can achieve in your life, be it your work life, your family life, your home life, what have you. You're the best. Next is getting real with people and getting real with God. Just tell them the truth about your situation. Um, so often, um, again, my sisters mentioned the mask. She mentioned the lipstick and the makeup. And that's fine to look good on the outside because we are visually stimulated. However, when you go before the Lord, when the end comes, He's not going to care what you look like. He may not even recognize you because we go through so much in life. You may go in there burned up, skinned up, broke down, barely naked. <laughs> <laughs> to leave a legacy. And so when you leave a legacy, Jesus left us a legacy of eternal life. Everyone that's talked about God and how awesome he is. But leave a legacy of business. Leave a legacy of love. Leave a legacy of family. Leave a legacy of a whole marriage, of what a great marriage should look like. Leave a legacy if you die as a single person, then leave it in holiness. Next is to disconnect. And she touched on, she talked about people. And when I say disconnect, so often, and I just want everybody to just meditate for a second, Look in your life, look in your heart, and think about some of the dead weight that exists in your life in the form of people and who you need to cut off. They might even be family. He didn't say don't love them, but they don't necessarily need to be in your life at this season. So you have to, again, not be afraid to go out alone. So it's okay to I give you permission tonight to cut the dead weight. <laughs> also, you need to reconnect. And when I say reconnect, Reconnect with people that are at your level. Mm -hmm. Reconnect with people that are above your That's level. Right. We don't. Yeah, we're all eagles. Eagles do not hang out with chickens. I know That's everyone's right. heard that testimony. Right. That chickens don't fly. Eagles fly. Mm -hmm. But eagles are known to fly higher than any other bird. Mm -hmm. And they typically don't hang out with other birds. They're eating other birds. <laughs> so, um, watch your mouth. And when I say watch your mouth, so often we talk about what we're going to do, but we never do anything. We're going to get around to it. I won't borrow you. <laughs> but we talk about all the things that we plan to do with our life, but faith without works is dead. It's a dead word. When I say don't drink the Kool-Aid, don't follow everybody. Be a leader. You know, again, not afraid to be alone. Walk it out. And when people come to try to tell you, well, you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, I say not so because... The Bible says that my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. So if you're in position and you're living the path that God has placed you on and someone comes to tell you this is not the place, it's okay to walk on church finger. <laughs> stay humble and always remember where you came from. Because not to remember where you came from in a sense of self-pity because my sister, that I'm the pastor, said, she said, I'm victorious, I'm healed and delivered and set free. But you want to remember because you always want to be able to identify with someone else's pain, someone else's position, so you can maintain compassion. It's, uh, finish the race. And when I say finish the race, uh, that means don't stop. Because Paul, when he um, was writing his writings, he said that everyone runs in the race, but not everyone finishes. finishes. And so when not everyone finishes, because 
my sister Pastor Wall said that people come in, they run you off your race. They run you off course, they get you distracted. It's not their fault, it's yours, because you took your eyes off the course. You took your eyes off Jesus. You took your eyes off your goal, and then you fell down. 